Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite brass drums. This is a Slingerland Gene Krupa Sound King snare drum. I have two of them here. As usual, I buy everything in pairs because I keep uh, plastic heads on one of the drums and calf heads on the other, so I don't have to sit there and change the heads. Uh, I can do this quickly. So these drums were basically made from 1963, I believe, until about 79, where they were branded as such. Uh, they probably dropped the Sound King name later on in the 80s, and the Gene Krupa name as well. But uh, I'm not sure if Gene played this drum, this particular drum. I have really old Gene Krupa snare drums. I've done videos on them, if you search. But uh, they did carry his name, and they have the stick saver hoops here that are rounded over. They have great rim shot with that and also uh, it won't destroy your stick. And the drums are fairly heavy. They are chrome over brass and they're five inch. Now they did make a six and a half version of this which happens to be a great rock and roll drum. I have a couple of those too. I'll do a separate video on those but I'm getting ready to do a video on all of my five inch uh, chrome over brass drums, which will include a Rogers drum, probably a Black Beauty, uh, and one of these drums, and maybe a Premier, and whatever else I can dig up. That's this side. This is my favorite size for on drum set, uh, the five inch size for a brass snare drum. So today we'll just be talking about these particular drums. I'll show you some uh, ways to fix them. There are some problems sometimes and the ins and outs of the drums and then finally I'll play them for you with both calf and plastic heads. So if you went back and listened to some recordings uh, in the 70s of the group ELO or Jethro Tull, you, know, you had Clive Bunker there and Bev Bevan with ELO, uh, maybe Kansas, Phil Hart with uh, Kansas, they used uh, Slingerland drums and I'm pretty sure on some of those you hear that six and a half by 14. Now the model number of this particular drum is the uh, Gene Krupa Sound King number 130. And back in the day you could buy these for about $90, maybe $100. Uh, that's what they were listed as. You probably get a better deal than that. And the numbers went from 130 to 131, which was the six and a half, and, the, and they had eight lugs, which is what these are. Then you also had a 10 lug drum that was a little more expensive, probably about five or ten dollars more expensive, and that was number 132 and 133. 132 for the five inch, 133 for the six and a half. And these drums had this zoomatic strainer, which has good things and bad things about it. A lot of drummers hate it. I do not hate it as much as I hate uh, some of the Ludwig, old Ludwig strainers, but um, this this strainer is functional, but I'm going to show you some ways to fix it when it breaks today. You can also replace this strainer with a trick strainer. There's a couple folks out there online who make a plate so you don't have to drill the drum, and then you just put that trick strainer on there, easy as pie, and it's that's a great uh, throw off. So, and when I say strainer, strainer, I mean throw off basically. Okay, but these are functional, these zoomatics. I have some really old drums from the 60s like these uh, that use them and they work perfectly. I don't have a problem. But again, uh, this knob here tends to fall off and strip, which is common. There's also a washer here, hopefully you can see that, that will dry up with time. If you put a little oil on that from time to time, that'll help it from drying out. But all of them dry out, fall off, then there's a problem. So I'll show you a few ways to get around that. But again, if you want, you can spend $100 and buy that trick throw-off, which is fantastic. It's a multi-step throw-off. And um, look online, just search uh, Slingerland Zoomatic replacement or trick in the same thing on Google or whatever, and it'll come up. Okay, so let's talk a little about this drum. And uh, one of the things about it that you have to watch out for is putting it like this a lot on its side. The reason is this brass was very, very soft, and what would happen is these lugs would cave into the shell and dent that shell. The uh, Superphonic was a much tougher brass shell. Superphonic also has that uh, little bead around it. Uh, the Slingerland doesn't have it. I think Slingerland claimed that that improved the sound. 
I doubt it. Uh, I have no evidence of that. But the drums do sound different. So when I do my um, video coming up here comparing all the different drums, you'll hear the difference. This drum definitely has a, a sound to it. It's a great sound. Uh, it's, it's sort of bright, but uh, not too bright. And it's, it's thick. And the six and a half, when I do my videos on those, that's a huge sounding drum. Not good for everything, but great for old rock. All right, but this drum is a good all-round drum. It can be used for jazz and rock and everything. Now, the badge you'll find on these is the black and silver badge. Sometimes you'll see a gold badge on some of them, all right? I've seen that, but I do not own one. Uh, it's a good-looking badge, and I'm sure some of you historians out there uh, will be able to, um, you know, comment on when that badge was made on these drums. So, like I said... This drum has a calf head, and I recommend calf on these uh, drums. It sounds really, really good, so you may want to try that at some point. Now, before we go on to the strainer, we'll talk about the snares. These are the original snares. It's going to buzz a little while I'm talking. And some of these drums would extend the snares all the way to the end with a different strainer. The Zoomatic, so did not work that way. So you'll find that there is a snare bed and that the snares sit inside that about a half inch on each side. I like that setup. It doesn't buzz as much as the, that extended snare model. Now also, later on, they did release this with a TDR strainer or throw-off, whatever you want to call it. That's a TDR throw-off. Much, much better, much smoother. Uh, although the top knob did fall off quite often, these last basically forever if, you're, if you watch out for that top knob, okay? The Zoomatics, though, do not. So let's talk about that right now. So this is a Zoomatic in pretty much perfect shape. I have several Sterling drums that use these. I have a few that the knob has fallen off, and I've bought them that way and gotten a great discount. I have others where the strainer has ceased functioning. And right now we're going to show you how to fix that. Most of the issue comes from a stripped uh, thing here. We'll call it a screw. <laughs> and I'm going to take this off and show you what it looks like. So hopefully you can see that. That's what it looks like. So this part will strip out commonly try to give you as many different angles as I can with these different cameras. And the knob would fall off and then you're pretty much finished. The strainer will not go on and off. And then also, like I said before, that washer will degrade over time and fall off as well. So all you need to do to fix it, you don't need to buy a whole new strainer. That's going to cost you a lot of money these days, especially a complete one. So you just get a little nylon plumbing washer. You see there. And you put that on there. You can also use a rubber one. And then you can buy one of these Tama bass drum uh, beaters. And it has this little insert to add weight to the top, like that. Just take it off. You don't need it anyway. I never use those. And put it on there, and that's your new knob. I, don't know, I know that seems kind of funny, but it works great. And you don't have to spend hardly any money. So the way you do that, you'll put it on there. Okay, and you'll tighten this little tension rod, and there you go. Okay, that's how you can fix it. And it doesn't look half bad, it doesn't look half good, but it doesn't look half bad either. So that's the way I fix all of these. Uh, very, very cheap to do it. If you want to spend $100, you can get that trick uh, throw off. That is a good investment, although the drum will not be original, but you won't have to drill any holes, so if you sell it, then you can put that strainer back on there. But that's what I do to fix these. And like I have a lot of these drums and uh, a lot of those beaters <laughs> and a lot of these things I just take off. All right, and then it's fully functional, completely like the original. So that's the trick for that. Now, these all have internal mufflers, as you can see. Hopefully you can see. Very cheap muffler. I don't use internal mufflers as a rule, pretty much. So I leave that off, but I leave it on there. It does not rattle like most of the uh, 
older drums, some of those will rattle when the snares are off. You'll hear them. This one does not. Now, like I said, the drum is heavy, and you don't want to put it on its side because the weight of that will, will basically indent these over time. You'll find a lot of these that will be tarnished. This shell is in better condition. Well, actually, I think this one is. But being, you know, 50 years old, not bad. And they will never, ever uh, flake like those superphonics, all right? Obviously, the superphon the chrome over brass superphonics didn't do that. But the ones that were on that lead alloy, that aluminum, did that. The chrome plating was flawed. These do not do that. What they will do is tarnish a little. It's not a big deal. So try to clean them. Uh, if you can look at my drum video on cleaning, I use that Meguiar's. Uh, car polish works great. All right, that's pretty much all you got to do uh, to keep these clean. And the hoops, again, same thing. They're really light, but the stick saver hoops are great. Don't change those out. They have a great cross rim sound. And also, they're really good for rim shots, as well as uh, not destroying your sticks, as some of the really old uh, snare drums do with the straight rims. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the drum set and I'm going to play these for you both with the calf head and the regular plastic head. Now as far as the bottom head goes, this has the original Slingerland snare head on there and this is an ambassador uh, re resonant head and this one has an Evans Hazy 200 snare head on there. Roughly the same pretty much. But this calf head is pretty thick, so you'll hear a pr pretty big difference. So we'll see you in a minute at the drum set. So here we are at the kit. And if you remember, these are those PV Radio 1000s, the drums that look like cable spools, but they do sound great. And first we're going to do the um, drum with the calf head on there. And you'll hear that there's a major difference in the way the drum sound. So I'll just play uh, several different styles. different styles mostly heavy rock and that's what I love this drum with the calf head for believe it or not now if it's a thick head you can hit it pretty hard without worrying about breaking it and this is a very very thick calf head one of the thickest ones I have so that also makes it very dry
it's also very, very sensitive. Now with this pneumatic strainer, usually it will go off all the way, so. sounds really good on Tom and the, the rim shots are nice too. All right, so let's um, just try a little bit more jazz, and we'll play a little bit lighter now, and we'll release this zoomatic a little bit so it's a little bit looser. One thing I like about these strainers, you can get them pretty loose by just adjusting that knob. And remember, this is the knob that I fixed with that, um, I'll show you, with that bass drum uh, weight, okay? can see that works just fine and we'll try just playing a little bit of straight ahead stuff not the drum set to do it on but you'll get the idea So that's pretty loose. So that calf head will give you that dark sound. Now let's put on the drum, which is tuned in a very similar manner, um, similar way I should say. So I like to tune these drums to an A or maybe a, um, a G sharp or A flat. And that's the top head. And normally the bottom head, I'll tune a minor third below that. So if it's an A, it would be an F sharp. And when you turn on the snares, that will activate or bring up that bottom head, normally about a minor third. So we'll see what this sounds like. I really love this drum. Again, it's kind of dark. It's not real bright. Playing simple stuff, it's big though.
Now with the snares off, with this plastic head, this Remo Ambassador, it's going to sound quite a bit different than the calf head. So very timbali-like. Now, this is a drum with this plastic head that you can bring up pretty high. And we're going to do that now. I'm going to crank this thing up. And it doesn't really choke out. It just gets very, very tight sounding. Great for funk. And when I do this, what I do is I'll tighten the strainer as well. So it has a good feel for that too. And you can also use it for jazz, this type, more of a kind of Ben Riley, Roy Haynes sound. Works well for that kind of Will Kennedy Yellow Jackets uh, fusion swing too. So it's got a lot of different flavors this drum. I really think it's the best deal going these days, especially since those Acrylites keep going up in price and the, the uh, Superphonics as well. This drum, I like it a little more than the uh, regular Superphonics. Not not the chrome over brass ones, but the uh, but the normal ones.